Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be making these cute little Easter baskets. Very cute for the kids for Easter coming up. So stick around. Let's get started. Alright, let's get started with our basket. Hopefully you can see this blue color okay. So we're gonna start with our two pieces, two pieces of yarn. Um, this is a Red Heart Super Saver. I don't know the color because I don't have the thing. Um, I bought it at Walmart, a great big huge ball for $10. Calls for a 5.5, but because I'm using two pieces of yarn, I am going to be using a number seven. So we're going to start with a magic circle because the bottom of the basket is going to be um, actually the whole basket's working in the spiral. So we're starting um, to work in the spiral. So you will need a stitch marker. Actually, I'm going to use a bigger stitch marker. Let me get a big one. So you will need a stitch marker. And if you have one, a row counter. So we're going to start with a magic circle. So hold your yarn like this. Come around these two fingers. So you want to you're going to come behind this guy. You're going to go over your ring finger and grab with your pinky. You're going to go under this first one. You're going to grab this one. You're going to turn because you're going to pick up the yarn here and you're going to pull it through that hole there. So in one fell swoop, your magic ring is done and your chain one is done. You're going to put eight single crochets into the center. I like to just use my fingers and hold it open like that. I also like to hold up by the knot. And that's eight, so I'm just going to pull this shut a little bit. Not too much, because I don't want this to be too tight to get into these stitches. So you're just going to put two single crochets in each of these eight stitches. So you're going to have a total of 16 all together. So we're not slip stitching, we're not chaining one, we're not doing anything like that. We're going straight into our stitch because we're working into the spiral. So two in each stitch around. So there's my 16 stitches. Now I can pull my my tail and close up that hole nice and tight. So we're going to start doing our increase right away. So our increase is going to consist of one single crochet in the first stitch, two single crochets in the next stitch, one single crochet in the next stitch, and one sing two single crochets in the next stitch. All the way around. So we're going to 
definitely put a stitch marker in. So stitch number one gets one single crochet and a stitch marker. The next stitch gets two single crochets. The next stitch gets one. The next stitch gets two. And I need to pull up some yarn because that is tight. So if it starts to get squishy as we increase, just make sure you pull your stitches over so you can see what you're doing. So the next one gets one. The next one gets two. two in this last stitch. So we can remove our stitch marker. And the next increase sequence is going to be two, one, one. So, or one, one, two, depending on how you want to do it, it's fine. I usually just put one in this next stitch for my marker anyway. So I do one, one, two, one, one, two. So I guess I'm kind of saying it backwards, but I'll put the prompts on this screen. So that's one. So do another one. And then you're gonna do two in this one. The next one you're gonna do one. The next one you're gonna do one. And the next one you're going to do two. So one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, all the way around. Sorry, my camera turned off. So you just put your stitch marker in there, and the next sequence is going to be one, 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 two, one, 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 two, one, 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 two. So we're just going up every time. So the first, the first round we did one, two, one, two, one, two. Then we did one, one, two, one, one, two, one. So now we're doing one, 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 two, and then the next spiral, the next round will be one, 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 so four, and then you're increased for two in the same space. So if you want to work ahead of me, but for this one, we're just doing three single crochets 
and then your increase. Tell so three single crochets, one in each hole, and then your increase, which is the two single crochets in the same space. So, the next sequence is going to be four single crochets in a row in each hole. One, two, three, four. And then your increase of two in the same space. So, it's getting squishy, so you can just make sure you find your proper stitches. This is our last increase. So four single crochets over the course of four stitches. So one in each hole. And then two single crochets in the same space. All the way around.
And that's the bottom part of our basket. So this is where it's going to get weird. In your, oh, I got my thing out. In this next stitch, where your marker was, you're just going to slip stitch. I know that seems odd with a spiral. And you're going to chain one. So, to bring the basket up, I, we, together, are going to have to do a back post single crochet. For those that hate these, they're not that bad once you get onto them. They actually make really nice work, especially for sweaters or for cuffs or, you know, stuff like that. I will work through it with you. It's not that bad. Um, for those that want to work ahead of me, um, you're going to be single crocheting your back posts. We're going to do our back posts. So you're going to come up through the front of your stitch. That's a stitch. You're going to go down through the next stitch and that's your back post. You're going to grab some yarn. You're going to have to manipulate your work by folding it or something. You're going to pull through that back post and then single crochet. I have to change my battery. I'll be right back. All right, battery changed. So we've got our first back post. So we'll do it again, come up through the stitch, go down through the stitch, that's your back post on your, on your hook. You're going to grab some yarn, you're going to come through, and then you're just going to follow through like a single crochet. So we're going to do that all the way around, back post only. making sure I'm not going to miss one. I would have missed one. There's a straggler in there. So you're going to get these, this big looking braid. Just making sure I'm in the right spot. I'm trying to pull my work snug after each back post. And something again. There we go. So you can fold your work down. Whatever is easiest for you to manipulate that coming through. Because I know how awkward that can be if you don't have the hang of it.
So just be sure to, to come up one stitch and down through the other stitch and not go through two, two stitches because then you're going to have two posts on, on the back side. And you just want to pick up one post. So I like to just bend my work in half when I have to pull through. Just makes my life a lot easier. This is the worst part of the project, just so you know. And it's really not that bad once you get onto it. But trying to get onto it, it can be quite awkward. I'm snagged. But once it all starts coming together, you'll understand why we had to do it. It's really the only way to get the separation from the base to the basket. Almost done. I'm probably going a little faster than you. Making sure my stuff's not getting. So that's where we started. So a little bit, a few. So after we're done this part, we are going to go back to working in the spiral. So you'll still need your stitch marker. And the only reason I chose to do that is because I didn't want a seam. So it is a basket after all. And most baskets are weaved. So I didn't, I didn't want a seam showing at all. So I have one more post. And then I'm just gonna slip stitch to the top to that end of that first chain. I'm gonna slip stitch even though I'm going back into into a spiral. So um from here, all I'm going to do is single crochet um, for the next 10 rows. I'm just going to single crochet straight up one single crochet in every stitch around for the next 10 rows. So you should have a total of 48 stitches at this point. So let's put our first stitch marker in because we're going back to the spiral. We're not. We're not chaining, we're not doing any of that. We're going back to the spiral because it just has a way better look.
All right, back at your stitch marker. Just take that out. Put your next stitch in. Put your marker in that stitch. And we got nine more rows to do, but I just wanted to show you when you turn it right side in, what putting that on there did. So putting that back post, that's what it does. It completely separates the bottom to the basket part. So. said that magic circle holds it pretty good and then that knot so so yeah so that's the inside and that's why we put this on is to to make it set up like that so we got nine more rows to do um, so this is where I'm gonna leave you because just one single crochet in every stitch around for the next nine rows this is where your stitch marker comes in handy so I'm going to do my nine rows for a total of 10, the one we just did, and I'll meet you right back here. All right, I've got one more row left. I thought I would come and do it with you. The next thing that we're gonna do um, is we're gonna put a rim around our basket so it'll just kind of finish it off and uh, with the, that we are going to if you're working ahead we are going to be doing a front we are going to be doing a front post single crochet we did for the bottom we did the back post and for all along the top we we're going to do a front post so it'll give it that nice finished look like you know a basket and then the hand and then you can fasten off once once we do the front post you can fasten off um, we are going to do the handle separately and then we're going to sew it on only because um, I've done it both ways. I've, I've just, you know, gone ahead and crocheted it and then crocheted it and built it that way. And I, I just, I don't know, I, it has an okay look.
And if you don't have um, the right amount of stitches around because you've dropped some somewhere, that's fine. It doesn't matter. It's not going to affect your basket at all. At all. So um, when I do these beginner videos, it's literally, it's a beginner video. So it's not going to matter if you've dropped stitches somewhere. And you probably won't even notice in here. So, so we take out our stitch marker. And we're going to do the same thing that we did before we did our back post. You're just going to go into the next chain. You're going to slip stitch. And then you're going to chain one because I need that height. It's the only reason I do that. So, we're going to do front posts all the way around. We're going to go in the easy way. So go into that stitch and pop out that stitch. And it's your front post. So this one's easy peasy. Yarn over, pull through, and then finish off like you're doing a single crochet. So down and up. Yarn over, pull through, single crochet. And we're going to do that all the way around. Sometimes you got to give it a little wiggle. So you gotta move it around, you'll have to manipulate obviously your work done. It can be awkward at times. But again, well worth it, it gives it a really nice look. You know, you kind of want this to look like a real basket, so. Oops, sorry. Uh, hard to see. Hard to see right now. That's a normal, your normal top, and then that's your what you're doing. So it's it's wide. It's a nice wide. You can kind of see it there. It's where it started. And like I said, if you're working ahead of me, you can just fasten off once you're done your front posts.
All right, cat, stop it. My cat is starting to get mischievous. He likes to do that at night. It's not even really that late. It's 11.37 p.m. But it's around the same time every night that he turns into a pain in my butt. A couple more posts. And you can just slip stitch into that first chain that I made. And fasten off. So we're going to do the same thing that we generally do. We're going to go in, we're going to grab our yarn and we're going to pull it through. So when I hide it, I'll be able to pull that and then it'll be even instead of not even. Do you see what I mean? So we'll just tuck him away and then we'll get to making our handle. So just pull on him until he's tight and then you can probably just kind of weave him in and out this way. So I'm going back in the opposite direction. And then I'll just kind of weave in this way and go back in this direction. That way if it tries to unravel, it's got a couple of directions and it's going to have to go first. So you are going to get a little bit of a spot like that and uh, and that's fine because that's where I'm going to put the handle, the one part of the handle anyway. So it, it does not matter. So there's your basket. That really makes it look like a basket. So without doing the front post up there, it's just going to look silly. And without doing the back post down here, it's just really going to look silly. So we'll set that aside and grab the yarn that I dropped. So you're still going to use two pieces of yarn. But you just need to make a slip knot with this. And you're going to chain 35. Okay, so I got my 35 and I'm going to single crochet back up 34. So you're going to start in the very first stitch that you can get your hook into. And you're just going to single crochet 34.
So it's 34. I'm just going to tighten my slip knot here. So I'm just pulling it out because it curls. So chain one, turn your work and you're going to single crochet the next two rows. So you're going to have three rows all together. I don't fasten off the weight for me. And don't forget this oddball at the very tippy top. That oddball stitch right there. Chain one. <clears throat> Turn your work. I think one of my bows is lodged underneath the table very well. So one more row. And then we're going to do something weird. weird and cool all at the same time because that's how I roll. Not looking much like the handle yet. Alright, coming to the end of this, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna, well, I mean, I guess we are gonna fasten off. I shouldn't say we're not gonna fasten off. We are gonna fasten off. So do your chain one. We are gonna fasten off. We're gonna fasten off with a crap ton of yarn. 
like a crap ton. I don't have my measuring tape. But, um, a lot. Because I'll tell you, I tell you what. Let me get my mask. So, we are sewing, starting four stitches in. We're going to sew this together. This is how we get that handle like that, which is so comfortable and actually squishy like you would think it's stuffed it's not stuffed um, so you need enough yarn to come through four stitches and then stitch this together all the way around and then come through four stitches and then sew it on and then you can cut your your thing and, and sew this other side on so that's how much thread you need or yarn you need so I don't even know a measurement I'm just gonna guess and it's usually too much so but that's okay that's okay if it's too much so I don't know what the heck that is I need a needle so, I've chained one already, so I'm just going to fasten off. By pulling that through. So, let's thread this. I have a bigger needle. Yeah, I'll use that too. So thread your needle. So you're going to come down four stitches. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. So go in to that stitch. Two, three. And you can come up somewhere near that stitch. I mean, we don't have to be precise. It's not precise. I just kind of want it to look even. So don't pull too hard because you want you want to try to keep that shape. So now that you've got this is the awkward part. So now that you've got this down to where you want it, you're gonna fold that in half and you're gonna start to sew. It will turn, but um, you can fix that when you go to sew it on. Yeah, I'm going to say I got way too much yarn. So I'm just, just trying to get underneath the stitches. It's just a handle and we're not stuffing it. We just need it to, to stay together. I 
again, beginner friendly. You can't really screw this part up. And don't worry about it turning. Like I said, it's just, it does that. That's what it does. You know, ever since everybody, the whole world has had to isolate themselves because of this virus, it's been pretty damn quiet out and I actually like it. I uh, live across from a church. So all kinds of hours, it's usually pretty busy. But it's been pretty quiet. So it's nice. And pretty soon I think we're gonna have a curfew which means after a certain time, no one's gonna be allowed out of their house. Some parts of the world already have a curfew. If you're watching this, um, and you have the virus, I'm very sorry for you. And I hope you feel better soon. And my heart goes out to all the ones that are hospitalized and not doing very well. I have a weak immune system and I also suffer from heart disease. So I've self-isolated myself. Two, three, four. So you want to sew down until you have four stitches left. So I've got five there so I can put one more stitch in. So just do the same thing, take your needle and just scooch it down. Okie dokie, smoky. So I've got enough left to sew some on. So if this twisting's bothering you, you can fix it before we sew it on. Um, well, <laughs> I guess not. That didn't fix it very well, did it? Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm just going to tuck him. I'm just going to go right up right up through there with this guy. It's not coming undone, so. Alright. So... We want to sew this on. You can choose to sew it on the outside if you want or the inside. Either way, do it here where this ends. Um, even though this isn't going to be covering it, it's going to be less noticeable if you put your handle here. See what I mean? So. That is what we're going to do. You can turn your thing inside out for this too. Make life a lot easier if you did. So this open part needs to be facing you. I have to thread my needle again because I'm an idiot. Okay, so let's get the end with the thread. So I'm going to put mine right on that mark trying to cover it. Now from here you're not going to be able to see it when we turn it back inside out. Then you will see where, where that was. But 
So make sure the open part is facing you. Just so you know. That was my cat. Because he's freaking out over the skunk outside. So just go through. And then just come back. So just in and out, you know, normal normal sewing. I don't sew, so it's probably not going to look pretty. I know how to sew, I just don't sew. Actually, I don't even know how to sew, I shouldn't say that. I don't know different stitches or anything. I don't know stuff like that. So you can go in back and forth a couple of times just to make sure it's absolutely secure. So I just went up. I just went up higher so um, it's up to you you know what the baskets are going to be used for I just don't want my grandkids to be carrying anything heavy in these and not that there's going to be heavy stuff in here but if they do an egg hunt um, my eggs are some of my eggs are crocheted and then you you have real eggs obviously um, Everybody kinder eggs, throw them around, they can... So, I mean, things are really not that heavy that are going to be going into this basket. You're not going to fill it up with a bunch of toys or whatever. Um, but if you if you are, then I would just, you know, go across, come back around. And so, once you are satisfied that that bad boy's on there and it's not going anywhere... Then you can just weave in a bit. Put your needle through this loop. Make a knot. Pull that tight. And then you can just weave and go right up into this space and pop out wherever your needle pops out. And that is it for that. So you won't see that. So now this is where you turn your your handle and try to get it even in the middle. I can tell you right now, your handle is going to twist and turn. That's just what's going to happen. So, this isn't um, attached to anything, so I am just going to make a slip knot with this and just like that. And then when I come in, so I have to get this all ready again. I think that looks even. So, let's go in this way. So when I go in, this way, I'm not going to pull taut, but I'm going to come back out. I'm gonna take my loops, my slip knot that I just made, and I'm gonna put it on my hook or my needle. Oh my god, I call my hook my needle, and now I'm calling my needle my hook. So I'm gonna just gonna finish pulling through, and then I'm gonna pull this all tight, just like that. And now that's secure. And then I could just finish sewing across. I'm gonna go back around just above where I just did.
So, I don't want to go too high. Make sure this edge is on there good enough. I've got enough cord so or yarn. So I'm gonna come back around and I'm just gonna secure it again by putting my needle through a loop. It help if I'm on camera. So I make a knot like that and then I'm just gonna weave it up into that hole and uh, pop it out somewhere in the handle just like that a little bit of a tug and then I could take this and I can do the same thing with these. I can just shove them up there. Same thing. Oh, I can't get it. There we go. There we go. I'm just gonna, I don't want that to be all screwy on there. And then you can turn your work around, back around. And there you have it. Your cute little basket. Isn't that adorable? Super adorable. So if you want, you can make little bows to hide this. You can put little bows in there on either side. That would be a good idea. Um, you can crochet bows. Uh, or you can just buy ribbon. Put the ribbon in there. But anyway, there's your cute little Easter basket for your kids. Thanks for uh, joining me guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video.